Emily Hester here. Hey everybody, it's Emily Hester here with um, Granny's Front Porch. Today is March 4th and I just want to come on here and wish um, my Aunt Shirley LaPrairie happy birthday. And in honor of her birthday, I wanted to um, just share something that is so deep, dear to my heart, and it is a Bible that she and her husband gave me many years ago, and I don't even have uh, the date, but it was after, um, soon after uh, my mother had passed away back in the early 90s, I'd say 19... I probably got the Bible in like 1992 or so, but um, anyway, I just, I just love this inscription that they gave me, but it's a woman's study Bible and, and it has been very dear to my heart. And as I've shared before, my granny's message was always, honey, just read your Bible. And when you had questions and in a season that I'm going through my life, um, I've kind of, I've mentioned this before, but I've kind of been away from the Bible for a couple of years and um, now I'm way deep in it. But I just wanted to share a passage that that I just love and anyway it's John it's the New Testament I'm gonna read from the Bible and the subheading says the eternal word so this is John 1 chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. And there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This was John the Baptist. He's not the author of the book of John. Wait, that's my side note. <laughs> this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. 
Now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask, Who are you? And he confessed, and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? And he says, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? that we may give an answer to those who sent us. And what do you say about yourself? And he says, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered him, Them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who is coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. Uh, these scriptures are from John 1, and I just read uh, to verse 26, 1 through 27. And then the next one I want to um, read is John three sixteen, which, you know, when I was growing up, we really, this really wasn't taught to me, and um, I just love it. And you should all probably, you're probably aware of it. John three sixteen. For God so loved the, Lord, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes, and I'm going to read 18. He who believes, oh, just can't stop reading it. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, ready, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, God, of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come out, come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every practice, everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Comes, But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have not been done in, that they have, that they have been done in God. I'm just going all over the place. But, um, you know, we all have religious baggage, and I was brought up reading the Bible, and we talked about it, but I don't really remember learning much about John, and if you're wondering where to start, I think I've mentioned before that the Bible is a book of, of, about God. It, it reveals God's nature. And I don't have all the words correctly. And I'm sure that there's some really good church, biblical churches out there that would help um, guide one into learning how to um, study the Bible. But I'm 51 years old. And. And, and I, I got my heart pulled back to the Bible. I was brought up since about two years old. I, the Bible was in my home. We studied the Bible. We read the Bible, sort of. Um, what was taught to us. But it wasn't until um, I had my son that I started 
thirsting after the Bible and and um, hungering for the Bible. And, you know, this and that happens. And, and I've gone through seasons where, you know, I've read the Bible from cover to cover at least once. And, but I still, my mind still could not comprehend all of it. And I know there's so many people out there talking about using words out of the Bible. And, um, and I just had my big toe in the new age and I was confused. I, I was confused during that time. I was ignorant. I was ignorant and I did not realize what I was believing because I was also filtering um, things through what I learned as a child and and not everything I learned as a child was interpretive. There was always a little something added to the scripture and I'm not here. I don't want to add anything to the scripture. But um, if anything I'm saying, and this is kind of getting, I'm rambling, but if anything I'm saying does, um, if you have a thirst for it, I think you can ask Christ. Because I'm not going to say pray to God, because I just read that you have to talk to Christ first. <laughs> and I mean, we can pray to God, but are we praying to the true God? And that's what I got confused about is, is I was thinking that everybody was talking to the same God I was talking to when I was in the new age stuff. And you can label it whatever I dabbled in, the metaphysical stuff, whatever. Um, and I, I was ignorant. And I just don't do it. I mean, I don't want to beat myself up. And I don't want to beat anybody else up. But we have a God to life right here. And if you're not interested in it, well, I guess you're not interested in it. But why would I not want to share this with anybody? I do. I, I don't feel at all prepared. I don't feel at all totally equipped to speak on God and interpreting scripture. But what I do know is that When I wasn't seeking my relationship, let me just go back. I started a devotional writing and I titled it Gentle by the Word. And as I just read, the Word is Christ. And He's gentled me, and I'm continually getting gentled because I was like a wild horse. 
as aren't we all rebellious and wild? But I mentioned I got this Bible. And, okay, I mentioned that I got this Bible right after my mother passed away. And it traveled with me. And I'm not sure really when I picked it up, but I began reading it again after my son. It was like one or two. And and I started going to a church. And I was baptized in that church. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> my thirst and hunger for the bible and to learn what i'm supposed to do and and all that you know it gets a little overwhelming and um it, it's been 20 years and i'm i'm still it it doesn't get old but it's so freaking simple it's so freaking simple there's Ten Commandments. Um, we try to abide by those Ten Commandments. But, uh, but I was brought up to follow the Ten Commandments. But it was for a reason. To have a better life. To get something out of it. It was, I looked at it as principle. But now, at age 52, now I'm 51, 51, I look at those Ten Commandments as, oh, well, I want to do this so I can be in communion with God, just as I've shared before on another platform. I want to walk with God. I long that. I long for that. And I don't want to worry. I don't want to worry about what I do. I just want to walk with God. And I just want to uh, delight in things. And you know, we're so used to what do I have to do? What do I have to do? What class do I need to take? What do I need to, you know, we just get on the the the, the striving around. And it's so simple. Just learn about him. He's so wonderful. But as I said, God is perfect. And he cannot be in the presence of imperfection. So Christ redeemed that for us. And I won't get into all the Trinity because I'm still learning it. But, and I have a dog down here. What, Fluffy? Fluffy is making her presence known. I'm rambling. As I do very much, but gentle by the word. Was you know, if if you're looking to just wonder where to start, I think John's a good one. And if you really want to get into a deep uh, dive about God and the whole purpose of a redeemer. Then go and read Job because the God of the Bible, well, Christ, people in the Bible, <laughs> and I don't have all the answers. I am not God. I don't have all the answers, but um, I, I, I did have to um, understand what a redeemer was though and accept a redeemer 
and uh, all I have to say is the God that I was the God we all don't have a personal God there's one God and And we, we were all his creation, but we're not all his children. And because there's only one way to be a child of God. And and from my understanding, which I don't have it all down, I'm just going on from what I've read, is, and you, you can throw this book out, but and go read some other book and go find a God that lines up. But these things are not comfortable to hear. Um, we all want to, I mean, do we all want to be like, um, I mean, do I like to be corrected? No. Do I like to get my way? Yes. Does God allow me to get my way all the time? Well, he lets me face the consequences to do whatever I want. I have to face consequences. Gosh, I don't want to face a bunch of consequences, though. I like the easy route and the fulfilling route <laughs> and my dog is still crying but anyway I kind of got off on a tangent I mean uh, I, I just go all over the place but um Anyway, happy birthday, <laughs> Shirley.